Yeah, and to answer the first part of the question, yeah, it's conference record that decides the division winners, and then I would imagine the first tiebreaker is head-to-head. But, uh, you know, if you just look at Purdue's schedule, not, not only the fact that the rest of the Big Ten teams seem to be struggling outside, I think, of Nebraska and maybe Ohio State. Minnesota, Northwestern. They're Undefeated. doing well against the teams they're playing. But uh, <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> Kyle is obviously not so good. Right. Northwestern North 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 play BCS North opponents. They are a combined like one in seven, right? <laughs> yeah, but they're still BCS oh, opponents. Okay. <laughs> but not only uh, are they, those teams struggle, my point is, if I could get to it, is that Purdue's schedule is just easier than the rest of the teams in bit. the leaders' division, right? I mean, they don't play. Nebraska, like Michigan State plays Nebraska. They don't play Correct. Northwestern. Minnes- like they do. But they Michigan, don't play Northwestern. But why does Northwestern Michigan State unbeaten. matter? Michigan yeah. State isn't even in their division. Excuse me. Uh, yeah. Um, Who did you mean? I had a, a They don't point. play Nebraska or Northwestern. They don't play Nebraska or Northwestern like Wisconsin. Excuse me. Oh, plays Wisconsin. Nebraska okay, okay. or Northwestern. Right. Thank you for correcting Sorry. me. Sorry. I was just confused <laughs> more than anything. I'm like, wait, I thought I knew these yeah. divisions now. Maybe I don't. But my point is Wisconsin has seemingly a more difficult division schedule and conference schedule than Purdue does, which does, is helpful. Does Wisconsin play those teams on the road? Play with Nebraska on the road this weekend. Right, this weekend, yeah. yeah. I don't know, to me, and I, and I think I was talking to somebody about this this week, I can't remember who, but Purdue has Michigan and Wisconsin at home, but what does playing at home get you when we're talking, we were just talking about this, the crowd. If yeah. you're having 35,000 people, yeah. that's an excellent point. how much of a home field advantage does that help you? I mean, when you're playing at Wisconsin, when you're right. playing any of those, we can name off six right. other stadiums, and right. that matters. Yes. So why does it help you playing at home against a team at a favorable schedule if your fans aren't going to show up and be something that matters? That is correct. Also, you know, we can talk all we want about what the uh, impact of the actual game day atmosphere is of a lame crowd. But from a recruiting standpoint, Purdue's going to have a bunch of pretty important visitors in this weekend, next weekend, and the weekend mm-hmm. after that. So it really hurts them in recruiting, too. Or it can really hurt them. I shouldn't say it's hurting them now because I don't know that. But it can really hurt you when you bring guys in, especially when you're recruiting in the southeast, and they go to Mississippi the next weekend, and they're visiting a school that may not be very good, but they've still got the place packed, and everybody's having a blast. And, you know, it, it's a great environment. The stuff really, really hurts Purdue, and it's a, uh, yeah. a major obstacle for the program. And right it now. is, like you said, a big recruiting weekend. We yes. can follow up since you mentioned it, and you're our recruiting guru. Oh, I don't know if I'm a guru. I, you are a guru. Uh, you're a guru to I me. that word. <laughs> oh, what do you uh, prefer? Uh, I, nothing. Expert? <laughs> nothing. I, He's a recruiting expert. I'm not an expert on anything. I, I, but it's it's been what it's been <laughs> We're making him two or three, I know it's been two or three weeks since Purdue's gotten a commitment. Could one come from this weekend? Uh, it's possible. They got five officials in this weekend. Uh, let me see if I can remember off the top of my head. Uh, linebacker Rayfield De- Dixon, defensive end Danny Ezechiku from Georgia, offensive tackle Delando Crooks from Georgia, <laughs> defensive tackle Kyle Shortridge from Florida. Was Dixon and Shortridge, are those the teammates? And yes, they are teammates. Okay. And <laughs> That's where I was going to go there. I if was you like, were going to go five teammate? for five, I was going to give you the guru title. The other one's on my computer here. There no, is someone else. It's not. There is one more, and I, I'm, I'm not remembering who it is. Uh, it's very possible Danny Ezechiku from Georgia. Not really sure a whole lot about his recruiting, what his recruiting picture looks like. Rayfield Dixon possibly has been a guy who's really liked Purdue from day one and has been recruited like an absolute priority. Guy, it's conceivable one of those guys might, might commit, but I, I don't know if I'd go in expecting it. Sometimes you know when a guy's making his visit to commit. Uh, I don't know if I see any yeah. uh, of those cases in this weekend's visitors. You're watching a pre-recorded version of Gold and Black Live, Brian, Stacy, and Kyle, as we uh, get down to the last few minutes. You just did third person. Do what? You just did third person. Narcissist. Yeah, I don't know. I just, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> We've got a couple minutes here left. I know that you went into a big, Stacey, investigation of Ralph Bolden's situation this oh, week. Oh, yeah. Which was interesting, to say the least. Do yes. you think Ralph will play on Saturday? I do. And I really, it's only a, a gut feeling. I, it, clearly, there's no evidence from the people who are actually involved <laughs> as whether he's going to play or not. Um, I, as, as Danny Hope has said this whole time, it's up to Ralph. When Ralph is ready, he will play. So I talked to Ralph, and I said, are you ready? He said, yes. <laughs> said, are you going to play? Uh, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. You have to ask Coach. And I said, well, Coach says it's up to you. And he said, if it was up to me, I would have played two or three weeks ago. So I said, what coach are you talking about? <laughs> and he was not talking about Danny Hope. He was talking about Cornell Jackson. So I asked Cornell Jackson the next day, 
is Ralph playing this weekend? And he says that Ralph has yet to tap him on the shoulder that, to say he's ready. Drama. So I don't know, <laughs> right? No. So I don't know, but just, just talking to Ralph in you know, the five, ten minutes or whatever it was, he seemed whatever. I, I got this vibe from him that I think he'll play, but it's not based on anything. The, uh, I, I suppose the question I would have is, we're asking the question, will Ralph Bolden play? The other question is, what does Ralph Bolden look like relative to what we expect from yeah. Ralph right. Bolden? You know, if you're going to put him on the field, he has to be better than what you got right. out there right now. And Purdue obviously has pretty good options in his backfield right now. You also don't want it to, if, they're, if Purdue's so fortunate to be in a blowout situation where you can just empty your bench, do you really want to put Ralph Bolden out there to run the risk of getting hurt again yeah. in a meaningless situation? So I, I guess that's kind of the, the dynamic here, too, that's at play, yeah. is what's the right situation? for him to come into. And I know he said, I said it would seem like this would be the game that would make the most sense because it's before you play kind of the big dog, so mm -hmm. to speak, and he said yes, it would seem that way. Which also doesn't answer the question. All so. right, prediction time. Crap, what I do? Last thoughts. What do you got, Brian? I'll go first since Stacy's scrambling to uh, look <laughs> to remember prediction. what my prediction was. Oh, I yeah. have them down for, uh, I believe, Purdue winning 38 to 27. I think Purdue will give up some yards. It'll give up some points. But I just don't think Marshall will be able to stop Purdue unless Purdue turns the ball over. That's the single biggest thing to me in this game is if Purdue turns the ball over a couple times, gives Marshall some short fields, some quick scores, all of a sudden a shootout breaks out and you're matching them for scores, a turnover can, can put you a little bit behind the eight ball and you, you're playing catch up the whole game and then putting your offense in positions where you, know, you run the risk of turning it over again and making mistakes. I have Purdue 38-24. Any thoughts on that? Everything he said was really good. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. All right. Uh, now I have time to fill. So, no. <laughs> <I'll>, <laughs> I was like, I can make I'll stuff up. That's all I usually do. Purdue 42 to 28. I, you know, I think to echo what Brian said and she echoed, uh, <laughs> you know, I think it's important that Purdue not fall behind right. in the first quarter by a couple of scores, you know, via turnover or, or big play or whatever, because I, I don't think at this point you're comfortable enough with Turbush in the offensive line to feel like you can make a, a big charge from from down 10 or 14 points. So I think the defense can, you know, slow Marshall down enough to maybe hold them to a couple field goals where they might have gotten touchdowns against some other opponents and, and maybe generate their own turnover or two. But it comes down to, uh, you know, not turning a ball over early, not getting behind. And I think if you do that, then you can control the the tempo and get a win. I think Danny Hope has said this year he thinks that they could be a come from behind team, though. Right? Yeah, I think you could you be don't uncertain. Want to be, though. No, no, I, I know, but I think be. he said that before that he yeah. didn't. I think it was leading to the Notre Dame game. He didn't seem to be concerned. Yeah, yeah number nine too, which I think true might have helped in those yeah. type of come true. behind, Agreed. come from behind, Agreed. make yeah. crazy play Agreed. type situations. Right. But he will not play. We don't think no, no this he weekend. Won't. Perhaps down the line. He you guys got even, anything else? He wasn't even dressed on Tuesday. Yeah. Um, I mean, he was dressed, but he wasn't in pads. We got what you're saying. Okay. You got anything else? I think just Saturday, <laughs> I, I, I think one really important thing is you just want to see improved quarterback play. I mean, that's yeah. going to be yep. the key. That and the ability to kick field goals and extra points is going to really loom large in um, what Purdue's able to do this year. Obviously, they got a great opportunity in front of them with a weak division and a relatively favorable schedule. Purdue's got to put itself in position to take advantage of it by getting good quarterback play and being able to capitalize on easy points in the kicking game. All right, that'll do it. For us, we're live. You're watching us a few hours from now. We'd like to thank uh, our sponsors, HGI Tonight. When tomorrow is, excuse me, HGI, that's Hilton Garden Inn. When tomorrow is a big day, stay at HGI Tonight. Follow its Purdue Pride, a Purdue tradition since 1945. And State Farm agent Trent Johnson. You can reach Trent at trentismyagent.com or by calling 765-743-9595. Thanks to our guest, Leroy Keyes, who was with us earlier. And uh, thank you to Gordon Jackson, Kim Caldwell, and Lydia Williams, who are uh, putting the show together this afternoon for Brian and Stacy. I'm Kyle filling in for the injured Al. <laughs> Thanks for uh, watching us on tape delay from wherever you are. We'll be back here hopefully live at 2 o'clock next Friday as we get set for Purdue's game against Michigan. Thanks for watching. This is Golden Black Live.